The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Gilbert Fire and Rescue Arizona on your new Pierce Quantum Pumper, job number 34765. Please utilize this five-digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Starting just under the front bumper, you'll find dual air horns on the passenger and driver's side. Just inside of that location, you'll find two open-ended tow hooks attached to the frame rail. As we move to the face of the bumper, you'll find your mechanical siren, PA speaker, and electronic siren. Moving up onto the very top, you'll find two D handles, which will gain you access into your front bumper load. Moving up onto the cab face, you'll find an emergency warning light. And then as we move up to the headlight cluster, you'll find a turn marker light. And then just inside of that location, your low and high beam headlights. High beam will be on the inside. Moving further up from that location, just below the windshield is where you'll find a forward-facing emergency warning light. On the outer edges, you'll find your mirror housing a flat and convex mirror. As we move to the center, you'll find a forward-facing floodlight. And then as we move to the brow of the apparatus, at the very top section, you're going to find your five clearance lights. Moving further up onto the roof itself, you'll find your emergency warning light bar. Located with inside the light bar in the very center is where you'll find your Opticom. Directly above the Opticom, just rear setback, is where you'll find your Go Light, which is a controlled spotlight from within inside the cab. Let's go ahead and take a look at the close-up here of the front bumper load, where you'll find two front bumper loads, swivel discharges, and dry deck material. General view here of the side of the apparatus. Let's focus in now in on the cab area. Starting first with the front axle, where you'll find a sight gauge, Alcoa wheels, and Michelin tires. As we move forward to that location, you'll find the drain valve for your front discharges. You'll also find as we move to the rear of the axle, positive and negative battery access locations. And then as we move just up from that location on the actual cab, we're gonna find side facing emergency warning light. And then as we move to the A pillar, you'll find shore power and also air conditioning shore power. As we move up from that location, you'll find your access for gaining access into the door paddle latch style with keyed locks. As we move up from that, you'll find your grab handles at all points of entry for firefighters gaining access in and out of the cab. As we move upward onto the top of the cab, just above your honoring America's bravest, you'll find a side facing scene light as we move toward the rear, you'll find a visual indicator for the level of your water tank. And then just above that, you'll also find an emergency warning light in the upper right corner of the cab. Let's go ahead and look at the front bumper area close-ups. First, the red is going to be your shoreline inlet. This is an auto eject. The blue is also an auto eject for your air conditioning unit. Let's go ahead and move inside the cab. We'll find affixed to the door panel all of our safety and warning information. This is placard identification information. As we move to the base of the seat, you'll find air pressure gauge. Moving just to the right, you'll find an air inlet. And when plugged into shore power at the bumper area, you'll find your auto charge system will be active, indicating the level of charge. Let's move to about the right ankle of the operator when seated in the seated position of the driver's seat. You'll find these warning information placards, and you'll also find this yellow placard manufactured for your department. This has information here for the date of manufacture, five digit job number, gross vehicle weight rating, cold tire inflation, the VIN number, all of your components, fluid capacities, and also fluid types. Let's move back down to the floorboard area. Quick glance inside at the left hand side of the operator, you'll find two foot pedals, first an air horn and then also mechanical siren. As you move up to the left knee of the operator, you'll find an audible alarm. The outer edge of that bezel will allow you to dampen the sound if active. You'll also find all of our diagnostic information and DPF regen information. Moving up, you'll find the red master battery switch, quarter turn for on and off. And as we move to the right, you'll find your pump shift. We do have instructions on the placard from road to pump, and then also instructions from pump to road. 
And then also just as a reminder, you need two green indicators, pump engaged and okay to pump for pump operations before you exit the cab. Let's move just to the right of the column where you'll find your load manager okay to engage the high idle, high idle engage, and auto lube fault. When indicated they're on, they will illuminate the outer edge indicating that the switch is active. Let's move to the dash now. First in the upper left hand corner, we're going to find our start and ignition switch, headlight switch, and panel dim switch. Just to the right, you'll find a placard in yellow indicating the height, length, and gross vehicle weight rating. As we move across the bottom, you'll find your transmission, oil, DEF level, fuel level, front and rear air. Moving up, you'll find water and volts. In the center, you'll find your tachometer and speedometer. As we move to the right, you'll find diagnostic information will display on the panel just slightly to the right. Let's move now to the right to the switch panel area where you'll find at the very top section. This is going to be your climate control for heat and defrost. As we move down from this location, we'll find a set of switches. First starting on the left side of the switch bank with the engine brake on and off switch. A setting switch for medium, low and high. DPF regen, DPF regen inhibit an SRS fault indicator, and also off-road traction switch. Moving down, you'll find your EQ2B. This is your mechanical siren control module. As we move slightly down to the right, you're going to find your Pierce command zone. Tremendous amount of information at your fingertips. Please see the owner's manual for more information. To the left, you'll find the yellow diamond. Pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release. And just to the right, you'll find your go light control module. This is for the light as a spotlight on top of the vehicle. Moving just down, you'll find the Allison transmission pad, digital readout, and also an indicator to pump and drive. Moving just slightly to the right, you'll find your traffic advisor. And at the very back section of the console is where you're going to find our flat mirror and convex mirror control for the right and left mirror. Looking overhead, this is of the driver's space. We'll identify the switch panels in the upper portion of the driver's space. First, starting with the red emergency master. This will engage and disengage all of your emergency lights. We have three future switch locations at the top, driver side scene, passenger side scene, front scene, and rear scene. Let's move slightly to the right where we'll find an additional set of switches for your siren brake, opticom, high beam flash, roof light, front warning, side warning, lower rear warning, and upper rear warning. Once again, when any of these switches have been depressed, the outer edge of that bezel will illuminate, indicating that the light or switch is active. Moving just to the right, you'll find your PA speaker and electronic siren control. Looking overhead in the cab, you'll find two lenses, either red or white lens, push on and off. You'll also find this red light indicating do not move your apparatus. You have a compartment door open or ajar. Let's move now to the rear section of the cab. First, when the door is open affixed to the door panel, you'll find all of our safety and warning information on the placard signs. As we move inside the cab, you'll find two forward facing seats and then also two rear facing seats. In between the two of those seats that are rear facing, you'll find 12 volt power outlets, also radio charging units. Let's go ahead and take a look at the forward section from the rear looking forward. On the left closest to the driver, you'll find your breaker panel inside this location. Just to the right, you'll find an additional access panel here. This is for your daily checks for oil and transmission. As we look overhead, you'll find two air conditioners. First, your unit air conditioner, which will be the black unit, and then the white will be when plugged into shore power into that blue auto eject. This will operate also. As we move to the exterior of the vehicle, at the very bottom section, you'll find a pullout step area. Moving up from that location, a D-handle will gain you access into the very first compartment. Directly above that, you'll find your location for your crosslays. We'll go over those next. First, starting with the two crosslays on the outer edges here are your pre-connected. In the very center, you'll find a dead load. And because of those lines coming from aloft, we do have a warning placard indicating entanglement hazard. And that's located just below uh, the netting here. Let's go ahead and take a look at some close-ups of the items we just talked about. First, that first compartment D-handle gains access, LED lighting inside, the pull-out style tray or shelf to stand on, and then as we move now to the upper portion of the pump panel, we'll start first in the upper left-hand corner with the two master gauges. 
First, this is your pump intake master gauge, and then just to the right, you'll find your pump discharge master gauge. To the right, you'll find the blue water level module indicating the water level of your tank water. And then just above that, you'll find a warning regarding entanglement hazard. Because of the booster line directly above or red line, there is the possibility of entanglement. As we move further to the right, you'll find a transmission temperature and also a warning indicator visual just beneath that. You'll also find all of your engine information in the set of gauges to the right, housing oil temperature, water pressure, fuel level, and also voltage. Tachometer in the center. We do have tally lights indicating stop engine, which would be red, and check engine, which would be yellow, and then also check transmission in yellow with an audible speaker at the very bottom. The outer edge of that speaker bezel does allow you to dampen the sound. As we move down onto the pump panel, we'll find all of our uh, crosslays and also discharges color-coded and labeled. You can see the red indicating that there is foam and water capable for those discharges. In the very center, we have a red bezel. That is your foam system, and also just to the right is the foam level indicator. As you move further down, you'll find your TFT information here regarding your master stream device, and also a set of switches across the very center section, and an indicator that is green indicating OK to pump. Your pump has properly been engaged. Let's go ahead and take a look now here at the number one discharge. This is the red discharge, and we'll identify a few more as we move forward. Also, the number two passenger side discharge, real discharge, deluge discharge, and the number four passenger side discharge. All the way to the right in the black, you'll find your tank fill. Let's go ahead and move up directly over the number four passenger side discharge is where you'll find your vacuum and pressure test gauge ports. They are currently plugged and are for testing purposes. To the right, you'll find your fire pump primer. This is a push to prime air prime. Instructions below, 1000 RPMs for best practices. The next module is your throttle pressure governor. Just beneath that, you'll find a green indicator that it's okay to engage the throttle. And also some warning information in the upper right if you're climbing on the vehicle, make sure you face the vehicle and do not ride on the vehicle while it's in motion. You'll also find your pump drain. And then just to the right, we do have a pressure hazard warning placard. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. Moving just to the right, you'll find your engine cooler. This is a twist, not a pull. As we move downward, we'll find the tank to pump. And then also at the very bottom section, your recirculating line. Once again, that's a twist, not a pull. Let's go ahead and move downward on the pump panel, identify a few more items, first starting on the left. This is your Husky 12 foam system specifications and instructions. We also have a warning label here that only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment only after they've received proper training. To the right, you'll find your large diameter passenger side discharge. And then moving further to the right, the number three driver's side discharge, two and a half inch. As we move to the very bottom, we have two placards currently pictured here. I only have one. This is your minimum operation maintenance schedule. And then just beneath that, you'll find your watchers placard. We'll go over those two placards in, uh, in our next uh, set of images. As we move to the right, master pump intake. And then once again, this coincides with the other placard. This is your minimum operation pump schedule. And we'll go over that in just a moment. To the right, you'll find your auxiliary foam functions, fill and drain operations, and then also a warning information here not to mix different brands or consistencies of foams for the possibility of foam failure. As we move down across the very bottom, we'll find all of our color-coded and labeled discharge drains. As we move to the left, you'll find the 2.5 inch female auxiliary inlet for the driver's side. This is the watchress placard. Once again, we'll go over that in just a moment. As I move further to the right, you'll find your flush valve drain. And then we do have a pan door down in the lower right-hand corner. This is also for foam operations. I've got a close-up of that. What I would like to point out is the very back side of the door matches the handle position inside the compartment here with the function. As you can see in the upright position, it would be in the fill position and in the vertical position it would be, or horizontal position would be in the normal operation. 
you have a 2000 GPM pump capacity. We have pump pressures for 150, 200, and 250 PSI test pressure. On the left, you'll find the GPMs associated with that test pressure. And on the right, you'll find the associated RPM. Once again, at the very top left, 34765. That is your five digit job number. Let's move now uh, to the bottom section just under the running board and that's where we're going to find our foam fill operations and also drain and then also a foot pedal for your booster line rewind. Let's go ahead and take a look at a general view here of the entire side of the vehicle. At the very bottom section you'll find two folding wheel chocks. We'll move inside this compartment in the very upper left hand corner. This is going to be where your battery charger is. When plugged into shore power these outlets will be active also, your auto charging system will be active to maintain batteries. As we move through the compartments here, I'd like to cover a few items here. First, starting on the left in front of the axle, two SCBA bottle storage locations. As we move to the rear section of the axle, you'll find a single SCBA bottle storage location and also the silver cap, which is your ultra low sulfur diesel. As we move the flap downward position, it exposes the 4.5 US gallon DEF tank, which is the blue cap. Let's go ahead and move to the very rear compartment where we'll find adjustable shelving, LED lighting, and ventilation. General view here of the side of the body with all of the compartments in the open position. Let's now move to the rear section of the apparatus. We'll start down at the very bottom section where you'll find your perimeter lighting at the very bottom area. You'll also find a pull-out step on the driver's side. Just up onto the tailboard is where you'll find your clearance lights. And then as we move up onto the body itself, you'll find an emergency warning light cluster housing a brake, turn, and reverse light. As we move up, we'll find a combination of emergency warning lights, rear-facing scene lights, and then also step lights. At the very top section, you'll find also emergency warning lights. In the very center section, you'll find your traffic advisor, and directly above at the top section of the hose bed cover is where you'll find your backup camera. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the close-ups here. This is that step with the extended position out. As we move up from this location, in the center area you'll find a pull-out tray. The release mechanism is on the right-hand side. Adjustable shelving at the very top section is where you'll find your, when plugged into shore power, your air brake will be maintained through this air compressor. As we move up, rear scene lights and also work lights. We do have two warning levels here, one entanglement and the other is fall hazard, never run on the vehicle while it's in motion. As we move to the right, you'll find backboard storage location and also a 10 foot folding attic ladder. Long handled tools in the lower section as we move more toward the center in the hose bed area, you'll find the two rear discharges. We have a two and a half and also an inch and a half. Let's go ahead and move now toward the front section of the vehicle. We'll take a look at the passenger side of the cab and body area. Let's go ahead and move now to the rear compartment at the back of the vehicle passenger side. First, starting in the compartment, tool board D-handle gains you access to the rear of the tool board. There is a latch at the very back section of the hinge area. You will require to lift and release to lock into position. As we move directly over the axle, you'll find a variety of different things. First, let's start with SCBA bottle storage in the rear of the axle, ultra low sulfur diesel fill location, and then also our equipment rack hydraulic reservoir fill location and site information. As we move forward of this location, forward of the front axle, you'll find an additional SCBA bottle storage location for two bottles. And you'll also find a placard just beneath this area indicating extremely hot diesel exhaust temperatures may exist. Please, please be cautious where you park your vehicle, especially during regen operations. As we move forward of this location, we'll identify a few Pandors at the midsection. These are access panels to gain access behind the pump panel. Let's go ahead and take a look inside those first, starting in the upper left. This is your water strainer. And then as we move just to the right, you'll find the power equipment rack module. We do have instructions here to raise and also to lower instructions. And then also we have a danger information because of the moving equipment rack, the possibility of pinch hazard. 
We do have a master switch at the upper portion for on and off, and then either lift up or down, green indicator indicating that power is on. Let's go ahead and move forward to the Pandora gain access. We have some control modules in here. This is for gaining access behind the pump panel. And then down to the lower left, Let's take a look at some of the items within this area, first with the number two passenger side discharge and also the number four passenger side discharge. Directly in the center, we do have a warning information here regarding pressure hazard. Be cautious when opening caps, they may be under pressure. Large diameter pump intake is the lower one on the lower left. As we move to the right, you'll find your large diameter passenger side discharge in green. As we move down to the very bottom, we'll find all of our color-coded and labeled discharge drains. And then moving further to the right, you'll find the passenger side 2.5 inch auxiliary inlet. This is a female coupling. As we move just to the floor area, you're going to find a pull-out tray step area. And then let's go ahead and move directly above. Same configuration as the driver's side, two cross lays and a dead lay. Also a reminder regarding entanglement hazard. Let's go ahead and move now to the cab area. We'll identify a few items with that, starting at the rear section of the cab. Just as a reminder, when the doors are open, the steps will deploy for ease of getting in and out of the cab. We're at the rear section now, door panel, all of our safety and warning information on the door panel. Once again, same configuration, two seats forward facing, two seats rear facing. As we move directly behind the rear facing seat, you'll find your EQ2B control module. This is for your mechanical siren. Let's go ahead and move forward to this location. Directly over the front axle, uh, you'll find an access panel for gaining uh, access to your filter location. And then directly above that is where you'll find the air inlet. As we move to the forward doors, once again, affixed to the door panel, we'll find all of our safety and warning information. Your vehicle is equipped with a supplemental restraint system and airbag. Do not mount anything within the vicinity of this airbag deployment. Also directly above, you'll find your control module for your go light. And then just to the left, you'll find 12 volt access via USB style. This is the go light control module. We have an on and off switch and then also a control module. To the left, once again, 12 volt access via USB and also an air horn push button. Moving now to the very center, you'll find the push to talk for your setcom system and then also your computer mounting location and also radio charger for a portable radio. Let's go ahead and go overhead of the officer position, first starting on the very far left toward the center of the cab. It's where you'll find your unit radio. As we move just to the right, you'll find a blank panel. There is a red and white striped identifier indicating spare wiring behind the panel. It's going to give you the information and termination type and also the option number. As we move to the right, we do have a switch panel. Once again, Emergency Master allows you to engage or disengage all of our emergency lights, driver side scene, passenger side scene, front scene, and rear scene. Let's move just to the right of this location where you'll find your AM, FM, Bluetooth, Sirius XM weather band radio. As we move exterior to the front bumper extension, this is where you're gonna find your cab lift. There are instructions here for the operation of that cab lift. Also some danger information. Make sure you secure all items with inside the cab before tilting the cab area. Let's go ahead and take just a general view here of the passenger side of the vehicle. All compartments in the open position. And now we'll go ahead and look with the ladder rack in the down position, exposing your 24 foot extension ladder and 14 foot roof ladder. We'll now move to the cab section at the roof area. First, I'd like to point out a few warning information. These are two warning placards indicating that this is a non-walking surface. You'll also find your air conditioning. This is once again 110 power, which is the white one. As we move to the very front section, this will be your 12 volt or engine operation air conditioning. Let's move to the dunnage area. We'll identify a few items within this area first, starting on the left with your booster line or red line. You'll also find your master stream device and also Husky foam system. Your booster line does have a manual rewind at the top and also a free spool tension knob on the right hand side. As you move more toward the center, you'll find your master stream device. You do have top control. And as we move forward to this location, you'll find your Husky 12 reservoir at the very bottom section. There is a shutoff valve and then also a sight gauge. And at the very top section, a fill 
hydraulic oil only and the specifications are on the placard. As we move to the hose bed area, I would like to point the yellow perimeter diamonds indicating the walking surface. You also have access within inside this area for your tank A, which is your foam fill operation tank. It's the green tank labeled A. We do have a warning information. Don't mix different brands or consistencies for the possibility of foam failure. As we move to the right, you'll find your water tank, which is a blue lid. As we move through them all in the open position, you'll see that you have three hose bed dividers in the very back that are also movable. Congratulations, Gilbert Fire and Rescue Arizona, on your new Pierce Quantum Pumper. If you have any questions regarding your apparatus, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.